Good morning. Welcome to Dillard Baptist Church. It's good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Uh, we're so thankful that you decided to spend part of your Sunday morning with us, whether you're here every week or every once in a while, or if it's your first time here or anywhere in between. We're so thankful to have you guys with us. We also want to say hi to those of us who are watching after the fact online. Unfortunately, our internet is out in this building, so we're not streaming our service live today. So if anybody says, hey, I want to uh, join in on today's service and I couldn't get online, it's because our internet is down in this building. So we will post that to our website and to our YouTube page this week. So you can let people know. I posted on Facebook about that. So if anybody says anything to you about, hey, I wanted to join you for church online, but I couldn't find it, that's why. So just let them know it'll be on our website this week. Uh, but we want to say welcome to those of you joining us in the future this week and sometime when we get that posted online. Uh, we're thankful for you guys as well. But whether you're here with us uh, on Sunday morning in person or joining us online later, we're just so thankful to worship together. Uh, we're going to start by singing a couple songs together. So we're going to sing a couple of songs that many of you will know, Power in the Blood and Lord I Need You. So I'd love if you would stand as we sing these songs together.
church family and our time of prayer this morning. Robbie Hendricks, this is for you. You said you couldn't hear me, so I'm going to try to speak up a little bit more. We do want to pray for everyone. We want to pray for our church members, Shirley Russell, still uh, she hasn't had her uh, thyroid surgery yet, but uh, we want to pray for her. She is feeling better from her pelvis pain she had. On our backside here, on the uh, got a few we want to remember. Mary Esther uh, has had one treatment. I think she gets it every three weeks. But is that right, Marilyn? But we want to continue to pray for her. Bless her. There's a new addition here. This is uh, June Ballard's uh, son-in-law, Guy Hanley. They recently found that he's got cancer, waiting on some treatment uh, procedure in the future, so we want to remember him. Ben Thompson, make a note on your tabletop there. He was originally going to start like his radiation on the 14th, which was Thursday. Uh, Don said that uh, they're going tomorrow one a few days ahead of time, so that's November the 11th. So we want to remember him in the days ahead. See something? So we, we'll come back and pray for these folks, but uh, I know everyone has a concern that they're praying for in their family. But uh, let me share a scripture here from you this morning. Proverbs 12, 19. It says, truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Listen to this story. It's entitled, Almost True is Still False. Cinematography, well done. Soundtrack, reflective and calming. Content, intriguing and relatable. The video presented a study in which redwood trees were injected with a substance similar to adrenaline keep them from doing, going dormant. The injected trees died because they weren't allowed the natural cycle of wintering. The video message was, was that this can happen to us as well. If we're always busy with no seasons of rest, and if that can be true, the video was inaccurate. There, was, there never was such a study Redwoods are evergreens and never go dormant. And the trees in the video weren't giant sequoias, not coastal redwoods. As thoughtful as the video seemed to be, it was based on falsehoods. We find ourselves living in an age where due to our technologies, lies are magnified and multiplied to the limits of convincing their truth. In the book of Proverbs, that compendium of godly wisdom speaks often of the stark difference between truth and lies. Truthful lies, truthful lips endure forever, says the proverb, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. And the very next adage tells us, deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. Honesty applies to everything from God's commands to videos about wintering, and the truth will continue to endure forever. Father, we come to you, Lord, again with thankfulness in our hearts to be able to worship in the church that is under your direction, Father. Father, we ask your blessings on today. We pray for those and ask you to continue to give them strength in the days ahead. And Father, we just come. Uh, I want to magnify you today. You are our ultimate Savior. You're the God of this universe. And Father, we're here to worship you today. So be with those of us that are here. Be with those of those that are online, Father, to receive a message from Ray that will give us, from your word, Father, that will give us strength to move forward. In Christ's name we ask all this today. Amen. Good morning, church. You know this one, sing with me.
but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. <clears throat> but you have the anointing of the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know the truth, and no lies of the truth. <clears throat> who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father, neither he who acknowledges Son, and he who acknowledges Son has the Father as well. Now, <clears throat> this week was difficult for me, and I didn't realize exactly why it was <clears throat> until not too long ago when I realized I was going to be talking about the Antichrist and false prophets. And, and you always get an extra dose of attack when that comes. Now, nothing bad happened, but I just felt <clears throat> a little bit of oppression all week long. And I kept changing this message. I was even changing it this morning uh, before I typed it out. I always type it out in the morning, read it over a couple more times. And I said, well, i got to say this. Now, if I kept saying everything that I was going to say, it would have been 15 pages long. So I've <laughs> got to slow down <clears throat> to figure out what I was actually going to say. Now, during this election cycle, really more than that for the last several years, there's been a terminology that has come into play more so than I have heard before. And I'm used to it now, and that's called disinformation. Disinformation. <clears throat> now that's nothing new. Disinformation. Just like the story that Stephen read this morning was very good. In fact, the matter, he could have just kept on going and had my message. Uh, if he had kept on going there with that story about a false story on the internet or on TV, on documentaries. <clears throat> now, when I was in high school, we called it a different term. We called it uh, propaganda. Uh, I don't know if you were in high school that long ago, but uh, we, uh, we studied propaganda. Now, it was always communist propaganda. They tried to lie to us, so it's propaganda. Now, we had studies on that, uh, and we <coughs> studied uh, false advertisement. Now, you know this is a false advertisement when you see this, that, and the other thing. And now, in the statistic class that, that you, most of you probably had in college, now they say that uh, statistics don't lie. But you probably heard this, that statisticians lie. And you probably heard the old joke about the doctor. Uh, he was advertising his uh, practice, and he said, uh, uh, only 50% of my patients were cured, and only one died. Now they asked him, I only had two patients. So 50% got better, and only one died. That wasn't a lie, but it wasn't the whole truth either. Now, during the, this election cycle, they also had something called fact checks. We're going to have a fact check. We're going to check the facts, make sure that Everything that the candidates say it is right. And the only problem is, is that not all the fact checkers are right either. Uh, they gave the impression that they were going to tell the truth. But sometimes they didn't tell the truth. And so you believe the fact check because you thought the fact check was right. Now you may remember several years ago, there was uh, Dan Rabbit. Now he was from Houston. He went to the same high school my dad went to in, in Houston. So I kind of liked him right off the start. I uh, didn't know anything about him, but I kind of liked him right off the start because he went to the same high school. Now, one of the things that he did is that he made a statement that uh, George Bush got a, uh, a statement that protected him from going to war in Vietnam. He was an airline pilot. You may remember that story. Well, within two hours after it was published and he showed the document, it was proven that that was false. Uh, and he had to re 
resign in disgrace. So the truth comes out. It doesn't matter what has happened. The truth will eventually come out, just like what the story about the uh, sequoias and the redwoods, uh, totally false. But the truth eventually came out. In this day and age, you better be real careful about telling the truth. Because sooner or later, the truth will come out some way, some fashion. Nobody gets by. <clears throat> the internet has a whole lot of lies, and it also has a whole lot of truth coming out. So you got to be very, very careful about that. Now, <clears throat> what uh, we're going to talk about this morning is the Antichrist. Now, Paul said, or John says, the same thing Paul says, uh, warn us about the Antichrist, that Antichrist are going to come. And how can we evaluate who is an Antichrist? Well, the scripture says, John says, that any spirit that says that Jesus did not come in the flesh, he is of the Antichrist. Now, from day one, years and years ago when I first read this, uh, my question was, how do I go about talking to a spirit? You know, I'm not talking to spirits anymore. I'm talking to people that say that Jesus did not come in the, Christ, in the flesh. Now, you've got to remember that Paul says in Ephesians that we war not against flesh and blood, but against what? But against spirits and powers in the high places. So a lot of times we think we're dealing with just human problems, but we're not dealing with human problems. We're dealing with spiritual problems in high places that are warring against us nonstop. Now, if you don't realize that, you're going to be fighting against people. You don't fight against people. Their errors or problems or heresies are not just human heresies. They're spiritual heresies. That's who we're battling against. Like James said, that Paul said to Timothy, that we are trying to reach people who are taken captive by the devil at his will. The reason a person is blind to the gospel is because Satan has blinded their eyes. So before you're going to pray for somebody, if you are praying, I hope you are, for somebody to be saved, you're going to have to deal with the spiritual forces that's blinding that person, that's stopping that person from hearing the gospel. So we have to blind <laughs> Satan off of people to keep them from being deceived. Now, how do you go about doing that? Well, that's another message altogether in itself. But one of the things we pray for is that Satan will be bound off them Nobody can take the goods of a strong man until uh, the house until they bind the strong man off of that house. And now there is a binding of Satan. Now, most of you uh, probably have not lived in a country like Brazil or Haiti where Satan is so, so active. And it's a totally different situation when you're in a country like that. They have what's called uh, seances and spiritists. They believe in spiritism and they have these meetings in their houses where they call up spirits. And uh, I remember I just arrived in Brazil at this church where I was working and just barely got off the plane, just finished language school and was up in Northeast Brazil. And I was sitting in the room, and I had never witnessed to a witch doctor before. I just never run into one, at least not knowingly. But anyway, he was uh, running this little seance in his house. And I walked in, I started talking to him. He first thing out of the mouth, he told me, he said, I don't need faith to believe what I believe. I mean, I've seen it. He said, I've seen people float through the room. I've seen speak, people speak in other languages. And I've seen all this stuff. Uh, he said, as a matter of fact, one time I even talked to Satan. He, he came into our meeting. We invited him into our meeting. He came into our meeting. I said, well, 
Uh, and I talked with him, and I, I told him, hey, I can be a little sarcastic if I want to be. And so uh, I asked him, I said, well, I never talked with Satan. What did he tell you? You know, I'd like to get an insight on what's going on when you talk to him. And uh, he told me, he said, well, Satan said that hell is a nice place, and they're waiting for me. Oh. And I, I said, well... I guess if I was him, I'd tell you pretty much the same thing. Uh, so he believed in reincarnation. And I said, what are you after in all this reincarnation stuff? Uh, and he said, I'm after perfection. And I'm just going to keep going on. Now he had talked for almost an hour. And I said, can you give me five minutes? Uh, just listen five minutes. <clears throat> and uh, he said, okay. I said, well, I'm after perfection too. Uh, Jesus said, He has made unto me wisdom, righteousness, and perfection. Jesus already gave me mine. And so I don't have to go through all that process. And he said, I wish I could believe that. And so I asked him, I said, what's stopping you? You know, uh, it's more truth than what you got. And so, but how do we do it today? Well, you listen to people. You listen to what they say. Out of the abundance of the heart, somebody will talk. Now, you also can read their material. Now, uh, if, and I will mention a couple, and you may have read uh, the Jehovah Witnesses Bible, and uh, you read John 1, 1, uh, and it says that, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and what Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, you read that first chapter, and rather than saying that, he says, and the word was a God. Now, there is a big difference between the God and a God. So you immediately you realize that this is not according to the word of God. And you can say, you know, this is an antichrist. Now, how can we deal with something like that? Well, the first thing you can say, how did you come to this conclusion? Well, here's one man, Joseph Smith, who is reading these golden tablets with special glasses, and he's the only one that's reading them. Nobody else can read it. Nobody else can verify it. And that's the reason Paul said, no prophecy is of any private interpretation. So if you're around somebody and they're the only one that has this crazy idea, you can pretty much, not, I get an idea that it's not right. <clears throat> and so you can also listen to the material, listen to preaching. And, uh, but in my thinking, one of the most important ways is know the Bible. And any truth that does not harmonize with the scripture, you know that it's wrong. Now, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there, uh, all over the place. And uh, especially with a term, say, like born again. If a person has a car wreck and uh, they're resuscitated, they'll come back and say, I've been born again. You know, I'm a new person. Well, that's not the same thing the scripture talks about being born again. That's totally different. And so what the world tries to do is take a biblical term and water it down so much that it doesn't mean anything anymore. And so you can uh, test that by listening to a person talk, read their material, but most important is know the scripture. Now this is an old illustration, and I've debated whether or not to tell it because everybody knows that it's been out for years, but you know how this, the Secret Service besides protecting the president, uh, their job is to uh, work with counterfeit money. And uh, you know how they discover counterfeit money. They don't study counterfeit money. They study the truth. They study real money. They study real money so much so that they can dis uh, uh, discover or can identify false, false money. Of counterfeit money. And so the best way that we can protect ourselves against heresy is by studying the scripture so much that we know the scripture. So when we see something that's not true, we ought we can identify it. We can identify what is not true. 
Now, there's a lot to say about false prophets and false Christ. Jesus said that in the last days, there's going to be false prophets and false Christ. And as the time comes to an end, there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be more and more and more and more and more false Christ, false prophets. So much so, that there's a scary thing that Jesus said, that if possible, even the elect would be deceived. And even we would be deceived. And we've got to be very, very careful with that. Uh, especially today, uh, you're probably familiar with uh, uh, AI, artificial intelligence. I think it's a strange word, artificial intelligence. But anyway, artificial intelligence. Uh, but uh, you read what's coming out. In fact, the matter, I haven't tried it yet, but some people have said you need to. If I wanted to, to get a sermon together, I could just say, I want a sermon on uh, the crucifixion of Christ, and I want it at the eighth grade level, and I want it uh, to use this illustration. Within 15 minutes, I'll have a sermon boom, right there at the feet. Uh, and uh, they're doing this in school where students can write a paper just immediately and uh, the teachers have to decide what's going on. Now, not only that, but there's something else that I've discovered. Voice recognition. Now, uh, voice recognition means that I can, uh, they can talk to me. I, 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 I've heard one time it's 30 seconds. I don't know how long. But if they listen to my voice for a certain period of time, they've got these computers that can imitate my voice. Imitate me exactly. And they can take my face, and they can imitate my voice. And not only that, but you've probably seen some cartoons and some people that you know that it's artificial, that it's not real, and, and you can read their lips. Now that's scary to me. They can read your lips. They can do a computer uh, animation and can read your lips. So they can take my face, use my voice, and move my mouth that you just think I'm talking. And I can say anything I wanted to uh, that they can make me say. So we've got to be even more careful. Now some end time preachers are saying that's how the Antichrist is going to be the big deceiver in the end. It's just going to be through this artificial intelligence. I don't know if that's exactly the way it's going to be, but I, I can believe that it uh, could very possibly be. Now I'm going to jump over to false prophets. He said uh, here in uh, John, in, in Matthew rather, chapter 7, he says, beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men grab, gather grapes of thorn bushes or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear good fruit, uh, bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in, into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Now, that's a little bit different from an antichrist. Antichrist, to me, is more in the area of doctrine, of what they believe about Jesus. False prophets might believe everything right about Jesus, but their fruits are totally wrong. In other words, they are deceptive in their fruits. They don't produce good fruits. And so they come to you and will deceive you. Now, once again, I may have been around more false prophets than you've experienced. Uh, because living in a mission society, uh, you're closer to people. Now, I'm not saying that a missionary is necessarily a false prophet. But they, sometimes the people do have characteristics. Now, one of the characteristics is that they are good on the outside, but a wild animal on the inside. Now, today, uh, I'd like to read a little bit about psychology and 
things of that nature. Uh, today we might call these people narcissists. Uh, they're, they're good on the outside, but the devil on the inside. Or they may be, may be also bipolar. Good on the outside, but mean on the inside. Now, way before these terms ever came around, the Old Testament in the book of Proverbs listed these characteristics. So it's not like the psychologists and the counselors and the psychiatrists all of a sudden came up with these terms, uh, these characteristics. They may have come up with the terms, but they're as old as the Bible. Uh, Satan came to Eve and uh, now he was one thing on the outside, a snake on the outside, and a snake on the inside. Now, it's confusing to me how she fell for that, but anyway, she did. But he said, let me tell you something. You think God is good, but he's not. He is deceiving you. He really does not have your best interest in, in, uh, in his mind. Or else he let you eat that. Now, she looked at it. And she said, wow, uh, this fruit looks good. And I bet it tastes good. And I bet it gives me wisdom. And I bet it will make me like God. Not greater than God, but like him. That's what I want to be. Now, there was nothing wrong with that. Now, if you've seen advertisements, I know you've seen dozens and hundreds of advertisements, and that's what they advertise, you know. And if you buy this car, you will be great. I mean, they, they advertise that for young men, said you, you buy this hot car and the girls will be jumping in your car right left and center. I mean, they'll just they'll be falling all over you. Uh, well, fella, any girl that's gonna jump all over you because of the car you drive, you're gonna run. Uh, I've seen that happen uh, before and other people, but you better watch it. You better watch it, better not do that. Or if, if you do this little shady deal, you can make a lot of money. You can do it really good. And this will make you better. This will be better for you. You'll be happy. The reason you're not happy is because you don't have all this stuff. And so we get sucked into all of this uh, around us. Now, one of the things that he says here that you can identify a false prophet Is by their fruit. It's by their fruit. Now, most likely, you may not have been where I was, but most likely you've probably been around somebody that comes across really great on the outside, but their results are not all that hot, are not good at all. I was with one fellow, and uh, Super on the outside, but I could tell that there was anger on the inside. You're kind of always looking for a fight. Always looking for a fight. And, and always ready to be aggressive. And I asked somebody, I said, uh, tell me this. So you can ask questions. I said, what has he ever done that's been successful? The fellow said, nothing. Everything he touches breaks. Everything he touches flops. Nothing he's ever done has worked. But he had all the credentials. He had everything that looked good. But when you looked for the fruit, there was nothing there. Now, what are we talking about fruit? Now, there's a big discussion on fruit. There are some folks that say the fruit is like the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, uh, such that there is no law. That's the fruit. Now, if you're a gardener, what are you looking for? You would walk out into the garden and you would look at your tomato plants. And somebody said, do you have any tomatoes? No, nope, I don't have any tomatoes. Well, boy, look how pretty they are. These are the nicest tomato plants you've ever seen in your life. Look how green they are. Uh, they're so kind to one another. All these plants, you don't see these plants fighting with each other. They're just beautiful, nice little plants. But do they produce any fruit? No, 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 they don't produce any fruit, but they sure are pretty, and they sure are nice to each other. You say, man, you're a little on the nutsack. 
Uh, I don't plant this garden just to have pretty looking plants. I want to have some tomatoes. Uh, and, and, and so the fruit that I see is not just looking pretty, but fruit, fruits of other Christians producing something. Uh, in Brazil, one of the things that I was doing and in, in, in other places is working with Master Life. Now, we didn't have a lot of starts when I took over Master Life or started directing it. We were down to less than 20% of people who attended the week-long clinic who went out and started another group. And the reason why is we didn't have good models. We didn't have a good model. So it took several years, but the only people that helped me after a couple of years were people who had produced other groups. And eventually, we got up to 80 to 90 to 100% started. I didn't consider a person uh, a disciple or somebody that was good in evangelism until they had led at least four generations to Christ. Anybody can lead somebody to Christ, almost. But can you train somebody to lead somebody to Christ? That's the first step. But then that's still not far enough. What's really far is that person that you train to lead to Christ. Have you trained them to lead somebody to Christ? Now you're getting somewhere. Now, let's go a step further. And to that person that you trained to lead somebody to Christ, that led somebody to Christ, that trained somebody to Christ, now you're four generations down the line. Now, you can consider yourself a disciple in my books. And uh, some of these people are still working today because they multiply themselves out. Now, another thing that you can learn, and I'll finish up this, there was a man in Houston. Boy, could he preach. Man, could he preach. He was absolutely outstanding. Now, I was sitting in a room with him one day, and uh, he started coming up with these prophecies that he was going to give. He said, the moon is going to turn dark in six or seven months. I said, what? Yeah, I got a vision that his moon, the moon's going to turn dark. I said, well, if that's the case, there's not going to be nobody around because the sun's going to go blank, and that's going to kill everybody on the earth. But there were some people that actually believed. Then the next thing he came up with is that uh, God told him that uh, his wife was going to die and he was going to marry the pianist. Wow. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and so then he, he kept on going and he finally came to the conclusion. He said, well, if my wife is going to die in a couple of months, why well, wait? I'm going to go ahead and get married to the other girl anyway. Uh, I'm not going to wait for her to die. But you know the rest of the story. He married every girl and his wife still living. Uh, now, he was an excellent preacher, like I said. He was super. I mean, he was like a man. I mean, he looked good. He had all the appearance of a professional evangelist. Everything was great. So what I'm trying to say is that this is what Jesus said here in this Matthew 7. He said, just watch the fruit. Watch the fruit. And do what they say comes true. Now, that's no, Paul says this in Corinthians 11, 14. He said, uh, it's no, uh, nothing unusual that people can look good but be rotten on the inside because even Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. He can fool you on the outside. Now that's happened a lot of times. We're even more dangerous right now with the TV and with the internet and with all that's going on. You have to be a little bit suspicious. You have to be suspicious. Now, being suspicious in an advertisement might cause you to buy a bad car or might cause you to make a, a false investment and lose a lot of money. But if you believe a satanic lie, that might cost you or will cost you heaven to hell. 
That's more dangerous. Now, being deceived with a financial problem or somebody telling you that this is perfect car or perfect whatever you're going to buy uh, might turn out not to be true. But believing a lie about eternity will cost you heaven. So you really have to know. Now that's what John says. Test the Spirit. Don't believe everything. <clears throat> I like to read health stuff. You know, this is good for you. That's not good for you. But I like what Will Rogers said. He said, be careful about reading a health book because a typo would kill you. Uh, so just be careful uh, about, because one thing I read, black blueberries are the best thing for you. I read another doctor, and he said, blueberries are key. And I said, well, but, but, you know, what do you have to do? In my thinking, you have to learn to try the Spirit. You have to learn to listen to God. Whatever you do, listen to God and get that inner spirit. Because in John 16, <clears throat> Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. He will help you understand the truth. Well, we've got a couple of minutes. Does anybody have any other questions? Any questions on this? I know I ran through it so fast that I'm, I'm afraid that I went too fast. No. He, he's not a, uh, he's, he died, I couldn't say his name, but he was in Houston. He was a pastor of a nice church until he got messed up. Oh, you're right. Well, it says there's a lot of them right now. John says there's many antichrists that come out. That's the reason we know it's the last days, because there are a lot of antichrists. The only difference is the antichrist hadn't showed up yet. And uh, a couple of years ago, several years ago, one of the presidents, one of the guys that was running for president, people said, man, we, you can't elect him because he's the antichrist. I said, you know for sure, that for sure? Well, that means you've been left behind because the only folks that's, that knows who the antichrist are the ones that get left behind. Uh, that's a lot. And you think you're going to stop them by not electing them? You're going to stop the antichrist? And God said that's going to happen? Uh, you can't do that. So, you know, name calling, I, I didn't say this, but a lot of times the propaganda and the misinformation is not necessarily telling the lies, but all the name calling is going on. Uh, you call different people different names, you know they, they can't be all that bad. Uh, now maybe they are, but the, the, the calling somebody the Antichrist, uh, that's the last person I want to know who he is. Good question. A lot of them, but the main one had not come in. Okay, what's the best way to not to be deceived? Walk in the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit, and every day lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and ask God, what do I do? Give me the truth. There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof the ways of death. A wise person in his own eyes makes a lot of mistakes. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't think you know everything. But always listen to the Holy Spirit, and He will direct your paths. And anything that does not agree with the Scripture, you know that it is not of God, because God will never violate the Scripture. Well, I just barely touched on the sub subjects of these two things because they are mentioned in 1 John. Uh, next week, we're going to look at prayer. Prayer in John 3 and prayer in John uh, 5 when he says, pray for these things and you will get an answer. So we'll deal with prayer next week. And then we finish pretty much 1 John. And I'm going to deal with the words. I'm going to deal with what it means to abide, 
what it means to know. That's going to be the last subject, topic on 1 John. Oh, yeah, okay, go get a prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for our time together. Lord, thank you for the truth of your word that will guide us and keep us from error. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. think about it now, uh, but as we think about that, uh, I want us to stand and sing this song together, Oh How He Loves You and Me, and we'll uh, have that as our time of response.
Is that right? Okay, so uh, that's going to be during our business meeting time, which is during before worship, during when we typically have Bible studies. So uh, that is coming up in, I think, three weeks on December 1st. So I want to let you guys know about that. I'll remind you about that in the next couple of weeks. But we just want to let you know about that. We'll have our budget for 2025 to present and some things like that. So just want to make you guys aware of that so that you can mark your calendar in advance for that. Um, but with that said, we're just so thankful that you came to worship with us this morning. Um, but this time we're going to dismiss in song. We're going to sing just the chorus together, the song that we opened our service with, Power in the Blood. So I'd love it if you stand with us as we sing together. Thank mm -hmm. you.